China's third plenum was meant to kickstart Beijing's flailing economy, but it looks like the solutions are more of the same failed policies. Welcome to China Uncensored, I'm Chris Chappell. I've been making a big push for subscribers. We're at nearly 2 million, only about 40,000 more to go. So if you're watching and you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button now. When we get to 2 million, we'll do a special live stream for you where we'll do something we've never done before. So again, hit that subscribe button. And now on with the show. So last week, the Chinese Communist Party Central Committee held a key meeting called the Third Plenum. And like the Godfather, people went into it with a lot of promise, but the end result was crushingly disappointing. Now don't let the name fool you, the third plenum is not the third meeting of this kind. Rather, these meetings of the Chinese Communist Party Central Committee generally take place every five years. This time around, the meeting was delayed, long enough to leave people whispering behind their hands about what the delay might mean. But between Monday and Thursday of last week, it finally happened. More than 360 leaders and key officials, including the heads of state enterprises and senior military and political leaders, held talks at a hotel. The meeting is the insider's insider meeting, so not much is really known about what happened there. But Chinese state-controlled media Xinhua released a communique last Thursday with a rundown of the results. So, like I said, not much is known about what really happened there. According to the communique, discussions at the plenum centered on a major resolution, how to deepen reform comprehensively to advance Chinese modernization. Advanced Chinese modernization. Is that kind of like socialism with Chinese characteristics for a new era? Spoiler alert, the answer is yes. The third plenum came at a very serious time for the Chinese Communist Party because its economy is in an abysmal state. Just days before the meeting, Chinese official statistics revealed a disappointing growth figure for this year's second quarter, which means things are probably much worse. Growth was expected to rise to 5.1% in the second quarter, but ended up only at 4.7%. And that's likely the inflated official Chinese statistics number. So you know it's bad when disappointing is the best case scenario. Chinese citizens are increasingly choosing to save their money rather than spend it. All this while the EU is slapping China with tariffs, and the US imposes tariffs of its own, and other harsh trade measures on the Chinese Communist Party for its unfair economic practices on the world stage. And that trend is very likely to continue if Donald Trump returns to the White House, along with the weirdly emphatic way he pronounces China. The third plenum was supposed to address all these problems, and set the direction to revitalize China's troubled economy. But it didn't really do that. As the communique reveals, the meeting doubled down on basing any reforms on Marxism-Leninism and the political theories of successive CCP leaders with a particular emphasis on Xi Jinping's political viewpoints. I told you Xi Jinping thought would play a role. According to the communique, particular emphasis was made on the importance of such vital things as cultural confidence, advanced socialist culture, promoting revolutionary culture, and upholding the party's central committee's centralized, unified leadership over the endeavor to deepen reforms. Which is to say, the party is all. Trust the party. And of course, the CCP had to throw in a few lines in there about strengthening the military under the party's absolute leadership, of course. Openness to the outside world and whole process people's democracy. And if you're thinking, none of that sounds very economic, yes. The plenum did discuss some things having to do with the economy. It praised the Politburo's success and achievements in comprehensively deepening reforms in the new era. And then went on basically to repeat that several times and call for even more unspecified or vague reforms. Overall, the meeting, or at least the communique reporting what happened at the meeting, was so uneventful that even though it made the rounds on Weibo, there was hardly any substantive discussion about it. The most exciting thing that happened was the purging of former foreign and defense ministers from the CCP's top body. Jing Gan, China's former foreign minister who hasn't been publicly seen in over a year, was removed in the summer of 2023 from his role as foreign minister, and then three months later was removed from his post as state counselor. At the plenum, it was decided that the Chinese Communist Party Central Committee should accept his resignation and remove him from his position on the Central Committee. Word is out still on whether or not he was also removed from his mortal coil. Li Xiangfu, Li Yu Chao, and Sun Jinming 
all once part of the PLA rocket force, were removed as well. In fact, Li Xiangfu was altogether dismissed from the CCP. Now all of that did gain attention on Weibo. But of course, ultimately, the Weibo accounts of various media outlets were alerted and comments were concealed. One expert said that this is because Beijing dislikes Chinese people arguing online about the CCP's high-level personnel, because comments might call into question the party's decisions and judgment, especially since Qin Gan was Xi's close confidant and the foreign minister. According to Voice of America, people on social media focused on Qin being called comrade in the communique, while others said Qin had a soft landing. Of course, having not been seen in over a year makes me question if it truly was a soft landing or more of a hard landing out of a window. So what exactly was accomplished at the third plenum, and will it actually work? Well, not much, and come on, are you new here? The third plenum's call for continuing to adhere to party ideology, and even double down on it, together with a lack of tangible reform announcements, could mean that the CCP has no good solutions to deal with China's economic crisis besides tightening control over society and managing the decline. So instead of trying to fix their problems, they're just making it harder for anyone to complain about them. Typical CCP. Now, the communique makes mention of the real estate crisis and local government debts, discusses relaxing some restrictions of the household registration system to make it easier to gain access to public goods, and proposes to increase the fiscal relationship between the local and central governments. That, combined with suggestions to allow migrant workers to have better access to social welfare, could make life slightly easier in some circumstances. But these small reforms are unlikely to make much of a difference in the broader problem with the Chinese economy, which explains a great deal of why there were several removals of key figures from the CCP, or the Central Committee at the Third Plenum, and so much mention of adherence to party leadership, Xi Jinping thought, and Marxism-Leninism. The real focus wasn't the economy, it was solidifying party rule. The communique of the Third Plenum also calls to strengthen public discourse guidance and effectively prevent and diffuse ideological risks. That's a decent indicator that the CCP is concerned about unrest, or color revolutions, as economic conditions worsen. Because if anyone would know anything about revolutions caused by terrible economic conditions, it's communists. Overall, according to Sino Insider, the Third Plenum documents, as a whole, suggest that Xi Jinping and his cronies are at a loss on how to solve the many risks and challenges facing the CCP, both domestically and abroad. And given that the Third Plenum makes note of the ideologies of Marxism, Leninism, and other CCP leader ideologies, compared to only Xi Jinping thought being mentioned at the Second Plenum, Xi could be trying to tamp down internal discontent with his rule or possible challenges. So basically, the Third Plenum wasn't really about the economy at all. Like so many things, it was just about consolidating Xi's hold on all aspects of governance in China, making grandiose speeches glorifying communism and sidelining rivals, both real and imagined. So instead of solutions, they just got a long, boring commercial that you couldn't skip after the first five seconds, like on YouTube. Which is not good news for the economic well-being of China. But the CCP has never really cared about its citizens' well-being. In fact, communism as a whole never has. They always make big promises, but leave people more crushingly disappointed than after watching The Godfather Part 3. That's why China Uncensored makes these videos, to spread the word of the misdeeds of the Chinese Communist Party so they can't get away with it. Join me in spreading that message by supporting China Uncensored on Patreon. You can contribute however much you want, but you could even do as little as a dollar an episode. And as a thank you, I'll respond to your questions or comments at the end of these episodes. And today's comes from Gregory Zeigler. Hey Chris, great if overdue episode about the bad Samaritans in China. I left a comment, but I have a question. Does this new law require people to help strangers in need, like the Good Samaritan laws in California? My guess is no, but that and a big ad campaign might help this problem out a lot. Maybe not enough people know about it. Ah, Greg is responding to this episode that came out Monday about China's bystander problem, where people don't want to help someone in an emergency for fear that they might get in trouble with the law. I think it's a really important episode, but YouTube age-restricted and demonetized it, so there's a good chance most of you watching never got notified about it. So I'll leave a link below, please check it out. Which also reminds me, I have a big project coming up soon that should get around this little problem of YouTube not notifying you of new episodes. Stay tuned for more on that. But to your question, Greg, 
No, China's Good Samaritan law does not require people to help. The problem is people in China know how the Chinese legal system works. It's rule by law, not rule of law. In other words, it doesn't matter what laws are on the books. The only thing that matters is your connections to people in power and the whims of the Chinese Communist Party. If the CCP decides to make an example out of you, it doesn't matter what the law says. And that's why most Chinese people do their best to just avoid having any contact with the party and its legal system. And if that means ignoring someone in dire straits, then that's what they'll do. It's a really sad situation brought about by the communist system. So even if the Good Samaritan law technically protects them, they know it doesn't really protect them. Thanks for your question and your support, Gregory. Click that orange button to join me on Patreon. And here's a video I want to show you. I'm trying to hide controversial topics YouTube might censor in gaming content. This video is about how communists take advantage of useful idiots to get them in power, only to turn on them in the end. Hidden in a video about a new Avatar game. Click here and let me know what you think. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.